Welcome to episode 2 of Minecraft Hardcore. We are all geared out. I enchanted some of my iron gear. I also got myself an OP pickaxe, silk touch mending efficiency, all of that stuff. I got the mending book from Frog Crafting when I traded some apples, which is an insane trade. And now, I think, where's Drift? Where did she go? We need to go to the nether and get some nether blocks. And maybe we can find some good stuff on the way. So let's get ourselves some obsidian and then build up the portal. Do you want to do the honors? I would love to. Are you ready for this? I'm ready. I want warped, but I have a feeling it's gonna be... I actually, I think we're just gonna land in like what? The plain nether. Oh, let's go. I'm scared. Me too. Ooh. Okay, this isn't, at least this is like kind of safe. Come on, Piggy, give me something good. Ooh, splash potion of fire resistance. I feel a lot safer now. I think we lost drift. Oh, hey. Oh, there. Guess Where? what I oh. found. Did you find it? Yes. You... Sev, no way. <laughs> no way. Really? Yes. Uh, it's across this creepy thing here. Ghast! Ooh, I got it. I got yes. it. Yes. Pro, 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 pro. Pro gamer. I think what we can do is just run in. I grab the nilium and mushrooms and stuff, and then we leave again. <laughs> yep. Because ah. then we can grow it at home, right? Yes, and don't look at Enderman. Okay, mine it, mine it, mine it, mine it. Two mushrooms. Three mushrooms. We have everything. Let's run away. Yes! Woo! Yes! We, we made it. it! We made it! I just got the best pickaxe. Fortune! And I already have my silk touch. So I was mining. <laughs> and now I'm going to fortune mine all these diamonds. And let's see how many we can get. Ooh, we already have so many. Oh, full set of diamond armor this episode. I can feel it. I can feel it. 42 diamonds. Oh, chest plate, helmet, boots. And where are the leggings? There they are. Full diamond gear. Oh, we have full diamond gear. And those skeletons help me quite a lot with that. Die skellies. Do we have enough diamonds for a diamond sword? Yes, yes we do. Die skellies. And we're going to be enchanting that sword smite for the skeletons. Actually good. And I'm breaking. Not bad. So I have some build plans for today's episode and it will be all about farming. I want to build a windmill right up here. So we need to clear out the area and make a little hill. And for that, I need a shovel and I only have these three diamond tools and diamond armor, which is not enchanted. So I might have to go back to the skellies where I just was and then grind out more stuff. Let's see what we can get on the shovel. I'm breaking three. Ah, oh, that sucks. That sucks real bad. I hate fortune on the shovel. Let's get rid of it. Okay, I've got a silk touch shovel and a fortune one with good enchants. If we put it in there, can we combine these? Yes, we can. And then we get silk touch and we just get rid of the fortune entirely. I like that. Okay, this is a really, really good shovel. All right, all my stuff is enchanted now. It's not perfect, but it will work for now. You know what isn't going to work though? These weird cobblestone blocks on top of this spawner. I think we should make a pretty house right on top of here. And because I'm very convinced that this is the right solution, I'm going to start grinding for it straight away. And we're definitely going to use bone blocks and I shouldn't talk while I'm on this ravine. Ah. But before we do that, let's spy on our neighbor farming wood. Hee hee hee, this is so funny. And here we can witness a wild infinite drift farming infinitely. All right, I currently got some clay cooking because bricks are going to be one of the building blocks that I'm going to use. But to save on resources, I think I'm going to mix it with granite. I don't have a lot of granite either. But what we are going to need is a lot of bone blocks because this house is, of course, themed around the skeleton spawner. So it's going to be made out of bone blocks. And now let's head into the mines because the last couple of things that I need is andesite. I can already see some andesite and granite. And let's go and use our fortune pick. Yes, efficiency five on the granite. Another thing that I forgot we need is dark oak trapdoors. And we only have a single sapling. And of course, you can't get dark oak with one sapling. So we need to go on a little journey and find another dark oak forest and get another sapling. Also, there are bees here right in our forest. Please, please remind me in the comments to do some bee farm stuff in the future because they are so close to our base. This is going to be amazing. Ah, there we go. There's the dark oak forest. Oh, I still don't have feather falling. Let's just dismantle the trees 
up here. It's already so dark in these forests. I mean, whoever can manage to live in a dark oak forest in hardcore mode, they're an absolute pro. Oh no, there's a spider down there. No. Whoa. <laughs> that was a pro shot. But look at our little area. Up here in the tree, we can overlook our wonderful birch forest. And somewhere over there should be the skeleton spawner. And we're going to build a nice house there. And I think, why don't we just deforest this entire forest? At least as much as we can chop down with the silk touch axe. Come on, let's destroy this forest. I hope there are no creepers lurking. If there was a spider, there could be creepers. I deforested this huge part like a big road leading to my house, but avoiding the two ravines that are right there where I just spilled water into it, which was kind of a failure, which kind of sucks too. But now everything around the skelly spawner is lit up, it's free of trees, and all we still have to do is build the skeleton house. And the house is done! This is such a strange block palette, don't you think? Birch wood, bone blocks, deep slate, and then some bricks and granite up there. But I really love this build. There's actually a tutorial for this exact house with a completely different block palette, which isn't as crazy as this one. And then let's go inside. There's not much happening in here. Let's put this here. There we go. Now we have the bones here. That's a nice little detail. Let's put some item frames here, one with the bone meal and one bone in here. So it's a bone storage and I think I might actually store the bones right in here, especially if I spend so much time grinding because now we come to the main attraction, which is the entrance to the skeleton farm. And down here in the skeleton farm, I want to grab as many bones and arrows as I can get. Also some of the chain mail and leather and gold that the skeletons have been dropping. And then I'm going to display them on armor stands. Bones and arrows in here. Let's do the armor stands. I think we should go one, two, three on here and one, two, three on here. We have some nice displays of skeleton armor. There we go, real armor that was worn by real skeletons who we destroyed. And the more we kill them, the more stuff we get. I think this is a fun little storyline aspect to the skeleton house because what is really important to me when I build something is that there is story aspect to the house. So we display skeleton armor in here, we have a skeleton storage up here and we have a way down to the skeleton farm over there. And I used the same block palette for the road than I did over there at my base. I cleared out all the trees so that we could make a road going all the way from this skeleton farm to over here. And I think this will give us a nice layout of where the next builds are going to go. And I told you at the beginning of the episode, we will make some farm stuff today. Windmill is all I'm gonna say. Some time has passed since I last recorded, but I was able to do some off camera work. What did I get? I got two new doggies. I got two llamas and I got two horses. But what I didn't get is everything I need for the windmill or dirt for the terraforming around it. So I still have to do that. I had one job and I got dogs instead. Let's get some dirt from over here. Maybe I shouldn't make a mess right in front of my base. Oh, and look at Drift's base. Isn't it pretty? Definitely check out her video. When I hold my shield, it's this big. But when I throw it on the ground, it's this tiny. How am I going to defend against creepers with this tiny little baby shield? All right, I started making this little platform here out of dirt and I just need to fill in the middle and then of course connect to the bottom like so. But I also need to have this road that I talked about earlier going through here, connecting to my house. Let's just start gathering some resources for that windmill 
which I definitely should have done over the weekend. I already got some spruce wood for my windmill, but now for the roads and for the build itself, I'm going to need a lot of stone. And for the first time in my entire life, I don't have any stone because all the mining has been done down on deep slide level. So my chests are full of deep slide. And while we are here, I think we need to dismantle this geode. Although I have been quite busy taking lots of the calcite, but I'm going to take some more, maybe some crystals, just because they're pretty. And lots of stuff has been collected. I have a chest just for geode items, which I think is lovely. And down here is all the random blocks that I'm going to need for the windmill. Look at this beautiful windmill. Well, the tree is kind of in the way. Let's get rid of that real quick. Yes, this is much better. I used a very interesting block palette or the deep slate down here and then I have a nice gradient transitioning to tough and then underside and bricks. And if you don't have scaffolding early game, then these warped vines are incredibly helpful. You know how hard it is to say warped vines. And I mixed up wool and calcite because some of it is a bit used up. It's been here for a while. And now let's work on the interior. Let's start off with placing three buttons right here over the door. Yes, that's a very nice touch. All right, we've got some leaves up here and I placed two torches because of the mobs that could fall on our head, which wouldn't be ideal. And then let's bring some chains down here. Yeah, that's a nice touch. Let's get some stairs in here as a storage shelf. Storage shelf complete. All right, I think that's the interior done so far. Let's put a lantern right here. We got the wheat storage. We got pumpkin storage right here. And I think over here, I want to put melons, but we don't have any melons yet. And right here is going to be room for seeds and wheat, maybe potatoes, carrots, all the other stuff we are growing. But now I want to make a wheat field going all the way down this hill until maybe somewhere over here and have the path going right through the wheat field. And I think that's going to look really cool, right? And the wandering trader is ruining my time lapse again. Oh, he must have despawned. Oh, well. Okay, now after that incident, I've just gone ahead and done a lot more work. First of all, here we have a very dry pumpkin patch and the pumpkins have not grown yet. And now I made a little pumpkin cart. I can sit here and enjoy the ocean view. How romantic, don't you think? And over here, of course, I spread all the wheat in different layers. Right here, I heard a zombie growling. That is very concerning. I made another path going down here full of little bushes and tiny baby custom trees. And then of course, there is still a path going to this build, which has not been dug out and placed down yet. So I'm going to do that right now. Well, not right now because I'm going to sleep. It is dark and scary. Imagine dying while making a path. That would be kind of weird. All right, now we have a very nice small path going from my base to the skeleton grinder, which is perfect. Right now I'm thinking maybe I should have turned those into slabs instead of full blocks, but it's fine, things can always be changed later on. And with that, I hope you have enjoyed this episode of Hardcore. I'll see you in episode three.